In the United States, it's legal for parents to inflict so-called reasonable corporal punishment on their kids. In most cases, this means the law specifically exempts children from the assault and battery protections the rest of us already have. Assault is a crime when an adult does it to another adult, but stops being a crime if it involves a parent, a child, and is spelled S-P-A-N-K-I-N-G. You know, this legal double standard reminds me of a few years ago when the Pakistani Islamic Council proposed a law saying that husbands should be able to legally give their wives a light beating for disobedience. Unsurprisingly, a lot of Americans were really outraged by the Pakistani proposal. But I think that outrage was pretty hypocritical since we actually do have the exact same kind of laws in the United States, except for our kids. And I never see the same degree of outrage that was directed at Pakistan being directed at the United States about our own brand of state-sanctioned domestic violence. In this video, I want to talk specifically to people who consider themselves progressive, because I have conversations about the legality of spanking kids a lot, and the truth is, I often prefer the experience of having these conversations with social conservatives. They're wrong, but they're also straightforward. They think that corporal punishment is a safe and effective way to discipline kids, and I can have that conversation. I can chew through those myths pretty fast. But the conversations I'm sick of having tend to be with people on the left. Those conversations are hypocritical, insincere, and logically inconsistent. So this video is about why I'm in favor of making it illegal to spank a child, and why the left should be too. So, you read a Twitter thread about an article about Michelle Alexander's The New Jim Crow, and now you're very concerned about criminalization in the carceral state. That's great, I'm concerned about those things too. But by criminalizing child battery, we would not be creating a new crime, since assault and battery are already crimes. The protective umbrella of assault and battery laws used to exclude a lot of people. Like, a lot. It used to be explicitly legal to inflict corporal punishment. God, I hate using that euphemism, beatings are beatings. On, for example, wives, soldiers and sailors, incarcerated people, and workers, which included employees, servants, and enslaved people. Then throughout history, things slowly got better. One by one, the law moved all of these demographics under the umbrella of who is protected by assault and battery laws. Military floggings were abolished in the U.S. Navy and Army in 1850 and 1861, respectively. It's tricky to pinpoint the exact moment when it became officially illegal to beat workers, since obviously indentured servants, white male employees, and enslaved people all had drastically different experiences and were treated very differently under the law. But according to a paper from the University of Iowa College of Law, link in the description, corporal punishment of all workers had been criminalized in the United States on paper at least, by the 1870s. Wife beating had become officially illegal in all parts of the United States by 1920. And the last state to abolish formal floggings of incarcerated people was Delaware, where the last judicial beating took place in 1952, although the state didn't formally abolish the practice until 1972. Today, children, of course, are still out in the rain. And look, criminalizing something is not a magic bullet. Obviously, bad things still happen. Assault and battery still happens, we all know that. But I think most people agree that there is value to explicitly saying that it is not legal for a person to non-consensually beat a spouse under the excuse of corporal punishment, or for employers to beat their workers, or for guards to beat imprisoned people. Assault and battery is already a crime. When you hesitate to move children under the umbrella of laws that have already been expanded to protect wives, workers, prisoners, and soldiers, you're not taking an enlightened stand against criminalization, government overreach, or the carceral state. You're only hesitating to give the most helpless and vulnerable people among us, kids, the same legal protections that you and your friends already enjoy. 
When conversations come up about criminalizing childhood corporal punishment, people love to immediately talk about how hard it is to be a parent. A really common line I hear from people who think they're being progressive is, I'd support a law to criminalize child battery if it were to include expanded support for parents. And that's fair, I get it. Being a parent is hard, and parents deserve more support. But here's the thing. While there aren't many other jobs that are a non-stop, relentless grind in the same way parenting is, I can think of at least one. Like parenting, it's a high-pressure, high-stakes job that fills every single second of every single day, and it can really grind a person down. People in this job also tend to have a huge amount of responsibility and therefore a corresponding degree of power over less powerful people. And like parenting, this job comes with the risk of abuse. I'm talking about soldiers serving overseas. Back in 2004, the world learned about torture and other human rights violations that the US Army and CIA personnel had committed against detainees at the Abu Ghraib prison complex in Iraq. The whole world quickly condemned US military torture, and four years later, a bipartisan coalition of former government officials, retired generals, and religious leaders called for some of the interrogation and detention practices used by the Bush administration to be outlawed. In other words, they called for the criminalization of torture. I'm sure some people are panicking about this comparison right now, so let me show my work. Both parents and soldiers in active duty have stressful, high-pressure jobs that are a 24-7 unrelenting grind, and in the case of soldiers at Abu Ghraib, include an extreme degree of power and responsibility over less powerful individuals in their care. But I have never heard a so-called progressive say I'd support a law to criminalize war crimes if it were to include expanded support for soldiers. I'm sure some of you will think it's ridiculous to compare spanking a child to torturing a prisoner of war, so just admit that, because I can have that conversation. I can point out that Article 32 of the Geneva Convention explicitly prohibits corporal punishment of any kind. In other words, the Geneva Convention agrees that it is torture to beat a soldier. And if it's torture to beat a soldier, it's probably torture to do it to a little kid too, right? Being reluctant to legally criminalize child battery because parenting is hard is not a progressive stance. That stance is logically and ethically comparable to being reluctant to criminalize war crimes because being a soldier is hard, or being reluctant to prosecute police brutality because being a cop is hard. Yeah, they do. The judicial system in the United States is a torturous, racist nightmare. That's true. Any legal prohibition is going to be disproportionately used to terrorize families of color, immigrant families, and poor families. That's true. That's all true. But that was also all true when we criminalized spousal battery. That was also all true when we finally criminalized marital rape. Those laws are disproportionately used to target marginalized communities too. But even the most hardcore leftists I know tend to agree, to one extent or another, that violent crimes are crimes. And assault is a violent crime. Even if you do it to a kid, the child battery problem in the United States is a real and legitimate crisis. According to a report from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, child abuse killed 1,840 kids in the United States in 2019. That means about five kids in the U.S. are murdered by a parent or guardian every single day. Five dead kids per day. Okay, fine. But murder is already illegal, and nobody has ever died of a spanking. Well... That's just not true. These parents did not wake up in the morning and make a decision to kill these kids. The vast majority of them just decided to engage in a little light and legal corporal punishment and things got out of control. Keeping the legal door open to reasonable parental brutality is exactly the same thing as keeping the legal door open to reasonable police brutality. And the consequences are just as dire. When you have the power to abuse people, Sometimes you kill them. It's a really sad truth that any law with good intentions will have bad side effects. 
mostly for people in already vulnerable demographics. But most of my friends on the left already believe that some crises are so urgent that they need to be addressed through legal means. For example, I know many people who think of themselves as progressive are in favor of gun control laws because they believe that the gun violence crisis in the United States is so urgent that we have to do something about it. Despite the fact that gun control laws will be used against people in vulnerable demographics. Child abuse kills five American kids every single day. That crisis is every bit as urgent as gun violence and deserves the same degree of outrage, activism, and action. You know, to be honest, I think the practical reality of outlawing child battery is probably much less alarming than the potential negative consequences of gun control laws. And you know, <laughs> we don't even have to guess. More than 55 other countries have already criminalized spanking kids, so like, let's check in with them. Here's a quote from a Save the Children report by Joan Durant on the real-life effects of Sweden's 1979 corporal punishment ban. Quote, there has been no increase of parents being drawn into the criminal justice system for minor assaults nor has there been an increase of children being removed from parents through the intervention of social workers. Quite the reverse. The number of children coming into care has decreased by 26% since 1982. Some of us support the criminalization of child battery, yes, but that doesn't mean we want to toss first-time domestic violence offenders in prison and throw away the key. In the United States, in fact, we've already got pretty good evidence that criminalizing domestic violence does not lead to a prison population spike. According to a report in Psychology Today, less than 2% of spousal battery offenders ever receive any jail time. I mean, if only 2% of abusers who beat a spouse spend time in jail, why do you imagine the numbers would be that much different if it were also illegal to beat a child? I agree that a world without prisons is an ideal. I also think that a world without borders would be wonderful, but we don't live in that world. And in the meantime, refusing to expand legal rights for children because abolish prisons is like refusing to expand legal rights for immigrants because abolish borders. In both cases, like, sure, the fantasy is great, but in the meantime, real people are suffering and dying. Real children are suffering and dying. Are we going to do something about that? My message for the left is, if you're actually a decriminalization absolutist, if you really do think it was a mistake to criminalize spousal battery, for instance, I don't agree with you, but I respect your logical consistency. My problem is with the posers, the people who use decriminalization rhetoric to put a self-righteous spin on propping up the status quo and letting abusers retain the same power they've always had. <laughs> like, I just don't believe them. I think they're glad Anders Breivik is in prison. I am too. I think they're glad Derek Chauvin was found guilty. I am too. And even if we want to step away from murder and compare domestic violence to domestic violence, I think they're glad Ray Rice was indicted for assault. I'm glad too. So yes, of course, we want the system to improve. We demand that the system improve. But in the meantime, we do think that some violent crimes should be crimes. So the only explanation I can find for the double standard of leftists who are reluctant to outlaw spanking is, at the end of the day, they just don't think assaulting kids is as bad as assaulting other demographics. And they don't want to say that out loud because they know deep down, that enjoying the legal protections we have while other demographics are left out in the rain, there's nothing progressive about that.